Hi all, welcome back to Watch Jelly. My name is Alvin and uh, today we have a very special unboxing for you guys. Just a wristwatch check. Uh, here I am with my white gold Daytona. Um, love this piece. Um, so in the time that I've owned this watch, I think its value has gone up quite a lot within this uh, six months or so. But today we're talking about a different watch altogether. So I'm very, I'm very lucky today to a friend of mine uh, who's recently acquired this piece. Uh, many thanks to him for letting me uh, film this uh, unboxing video. I uh, really appreciate it and uh, I think I think one of the reasons why he bought this was because we both agree that this is an amazing watch and its value appreciation in recent months is just the beginning and it's so underrated. It's very youthful. Uh, this friend of mine is in his mid 20s so I think this is a particularly uh, suitable watch for him. It's a very useful look and useful flair and vibe. I think fits anyone under 30 or 35 years old. But here goes the watch. So, um, very typical Rolex boxing. The Yachtmaster is Rolex's uh, most diverse sports watch collection because not only is it available in a wide assortment of case metals and sizes, but it has also been paired with various bracelet styles and bezel materials. Um, in less than three decades, the Rolex Yachtmaster collection has become home to dozens of references, some of which have been discontinued, but um, there are two distinct models that almost share identical names, the Rolex Yachtmaster and the Rolex Yachtmaster 2. For the purposes of this video, we'll be talking about the Rolex Yachtmaster. The Yachtmaster is essentially the kind of watch you wear while lounging out on a boat, preferably a yacht, hence the name. It has now recently become more popular because the Yachtmaster's older siblings uh, have astronomical values in the secondary market and the Yachtmaster is slowly starting to get the attention it very well deserved for many years now. The Yachtmaster typically follows the Submariner but uh, it is much more slim in its case profile. Uh, it's a thinner watch overall but it's ultra premium in my opinion because not only has it been given the uh, polished mid-links bracelet, it, is also, it also comes with a platinum bezel and we'll see that shortly. So for this particular Yachtmaster, it is the 40mm steel with the racing blue dial. Um, I think at the time of this video, uh, the Yachtmaster 40mm uh, at, with this racing blue dial costs about 10 to 15 percent less than the rhodium dial that is 40mm. I'm not too sure why. Um, I think comparing the Daytona that is on my wrist right now with the silver dial compared to the white gold with the racing blue dial, I think the blue dial on, on that Daytona costs I, I think 20 percent more than my watch. Um, but it is not the case for this Yachtmaster, which is kind of odd because, I mean, blue has been a preferred dial color for most collectors. And in this case, I think it adds incredible contrast to the already very silver stainless steel watch and the silver platinum bezel. So comparing this with the Rhodium, which is also a smoky gray, uh, metallic gray dial, I don't think the, the contrast is all that strong. This However, uh, it's just gorgeous in the way that it is constructed. I think the racing blue, the red font uh, on the Yachtmaster on this dial and the red second hand makes it a very quirky, sporty, youthful and vibrant piece, I think, as a, as a very, very viable alternative to any Rolex Mariner, which I think has become a bit sterile over the last uh, five to 10 years. So this Yachtmaster, um, in its case profile, it's very similar to the Rolex Daytona that I'm wearing. It's slimmer in size because it is not specifically a dive watch. It is more a, you know, lounging watch, if you will. And if you see, again, the bracelet is given the polished mid-links, which is what Rolex does for its uh, GMT Master, uh, its Daytona line, and obviously the Yacht Master line, which is, in my opinion, uh, a sign of a premium Rolex model relative to, say, a regular Submariner. Why has the Yachtmaster only started trading above its retail value in the secondary market? I think that's primarily because the Yachtmaster is a more recent release from Rolex. Uh, there isn't as much history compared to the Submariner uh, that was released in the early 50s, nor has it been released uh, in limited quantities like the Daytona uh, since the 60s and obviously in the 80s as well. 
In 1992, we were finally introduced to the modern Yachtmaster we know and love today. Its official name, the Rolex Oyster Perpetual Yachtmaster, was the brand's first ultra-luxury sports watch built for the open seas. If anything, I expect prices to keep going up because there's just so much room for it to appreciate as a Yachtmaster model. Um, it is by no means an inferior model to the Submariner or the GMT. In fact, I think the Yachtmaster is a more premium version of the Submariner and it is vastly underrated still to this day. So keep a look out for this. If you like a Rolex watch that is slim, sporty, youthful and moderately more premium, the Yachtmaster is one to consider for sure. In October 2021, this watch was going for 14,500 US dollars. As of February 2022, it has risen to 17,500 US dollars. We shall see where this goes in the next six months to one year. It'll probably be north of 22,000 US dollars in one year's time. Unboxing this watch here today makes me really love this watch even more. I've always liked it from afar. I think unboxing this here today, uh, if anything, made me really want to buy this watch. <laughs> uh, made me really want to own it as well. So uh, that being said, I'm very, very happy that my friend here uh, has uh, decided to reward himself with this watch and uh, selecting such a fine piece to add to his collection. I, I love it and I hope he wears it in great health. Um, that's all for me today. Uh, Please remember to like, share and subscribe if you like the content. I uh, appreciate you watching all today. Don't forget to keep watching Jelly.